What's up, outliers? Two pieces for the market update today. I want to talk a little bit about the broad markets because there was a bit of a shakeup today, and a lot of that has to do with Jackson Hole and some of the Fed comments we're seeing. And then the second thing is, you know, we're going to take a look at GameStop and see what's going on in there. So starting off with the broad market, bit of a down day, bit of a heavy down day. And when I look across the various indices, you can see in the top left here, the S&P 500 had uh, a pretty moderate down day. It's essentially still just shy of where we were hitting previous highs. This has made the best relative recovery and starting to reject back down, but Q's is still worse off. We can see Q's about made it maybe 80% of the way-ish back up to near-term highs before it started rejecting down today. And then same thing for IWM, it's about uh, maybe 60% of a recovery back up to near-term highs and another down day. So what I'm highlighting here first and foremost is that it was down across the board. Everybody was down today. If I were to peg where I saw relative weakness, it was in tech. And you can kind of see that by the sides of this candle compared to the others. And you can also see that there's very little wick. This was kind of a one-sided move. And you can see that represented also in the volume that you see here today. IWM, a little bit more of a two-sided action with kind of these little baby wicks on both sides. And then SPY actually has a bigger tail wick to the downside and then a little baby one to the upside. So all I'm highlighting with talking about the wicks is simply that from a movement perspective, what we saw today in the queues was kind of more decisive and one directional. Now, interestingly, net highs, lows doesn't look bad. So net highs, lows definitely contracted pretty meaningfully today in the queues. Yesterday, it was hovering around 112 net highs, lows, and today is about cut in half to 62. So big drop there. And for the New York Stock Exchange, it's kind of still cruising right along. It actually expanded net highs today. Uh, sorry, misspoke. It didn't move much. Yesterday was 142 net highs and today was 136. So not really caring that much. And it was gross lows that stayed pegged at 17. So the New York Stock Exchange right now is still pretty resilient, which is interesting to see small caps continue to be so troubled here. We also saw a downtick in bonds, which was really interesting. That's came down to 124.04. And VIX is up ever so slightly. So we're now starting to crack above 17 and a half. Again, I've talked to you guys about some of the way that I like to fade the VIX too early for me. I actually have a slightly long VIX position on right now in the VIX futures. And it's literally just to offset some of the other index stuff I have on. And it'll probably come down pretty quick. I'm not really expecting volatility to start accelerating overly meaningfully here. Now, the other thing today is there's a bunch, a bunch of economic data and news that came out that I think we should take a quick look at together. So we can see jobless claims came in right on top of consensus. We can see that global manufacturing PMI came in a little bit light and services came in a little bit over expectations. So as I'm looking through this, it's a bit of a mixed bag today. And tomorrow we have uh, Powell speaking, which will be really, really informative. I think the market is a little bit pensive here with respect to how the economy is doing. We're continuing to see some mixed signals flowing in. And I think everybody is kind of waiting to see what this cut picture ultimately ends up looking like. So if I take a look at the Fed watch tool, surprisingly, the probability of a 25 basis point cut actually increased pretty massively, which I have to be honest with you, I didn't expect this. So for a while, we were trending a little heavier on the probability of a 50 basis point cut, and it's slowing down and it's moving further in favor of a 25 base point cut, which I imagine is kind of a little bit better news, I guess, technically speaking, because it means that things aren't coming crashing down and we need to start, you know, reversing policy super fast, but it still surprises me just a little bit. So the next thing we got to take a look at, you already know it, is the crowd favorite, GME. Volume, uh, man, is just not here. We are just not seeing volume yet. Volume today was 3.3 million. Buy volume was... 150,000, um, just sale volume is 
million. So the overwhelming majority of volume today was to the sales side. And that's not overly surprising, right? It was a, a fairly non-trivial down day for the market. One of the bigger down days we've seen year to date. So again, for context, if I grab IWM and I show you this candle today, it's to be clear, it's had plenty of big down days, but on a near term basis, this has been one of the larger down days that we've seen. And as I look across, it's especially IWM has had quite a few actually of these bigger down days. So maybe I'm thinking more. So let me check spy really quick. That's more so what I'm thinking because you can see spy has definitely had a few of them here, 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 here that this day aligns with more, um, but it's probably in like the top quintile, like top 10% or so, whereas IWM has been getting beat up a little bit more here, unfortunately, but it is consolidating. So that part's good. There wasn't some massive rejection today. Markets go two directions and we've had this really aggressive move up and out a little less aggressive in something like IWM. But all I'm saying in this context is we see some downward pressure, right? Take a look at the, at the money put call ratio, 3.4 to one. So people really are kind of positioning very specifically in the product, at least for the front expiration or for the next primary expiration. Sorry. Um, but when I look at something like Jimmy, it's down today, unsurprising 1.9%, but that's not the end of the world considering the, the broader landscape of what's moving. So GME continues to consolidate. As long as I see it maintaining this consolidation movement, I really don't dislike that for it because it's at least not getting rejected down to new lows. We're starting to arrive at a new consensus value for where people think this thing is a good buy at, which you can see coming through, like tons of people have been transacting in this 22 handle. So a quick stroll over to the options and volume today was super light yet again. 65,000 calls against 15,000 puts still call skew, but just very light. This is again, very, very light for what we typically see in GameStop. And I'll continue to reiterate a few important points because when I see them change, that will be important. So you'll hear me say some of the same stuff, such as right now, I see the expiration all over the place, meaning current call and put OI is scattered. For the put OI, there's a little bit of a drift to further and future expirations. Whereas, so here you can see on the put side, the, the largest tranches are in 17 Jan 25. We see 18 Oct um, 24. That's kind of the next biggest one here. We see 20 SEP. That's kind of the only 20 SEP you see out here. So for the put side, it's mostly kicked out into the future. On the call side, it's a mixed bag, a little bit of all over the place. The other thing I told you I'm continuing to keep an eyeball on is this right here. And this trade has actually been coming in nicely for me now on a really small scale because it's not doing a whole lot. But I've been talking to you about this six step expectation that that vol will continue to increase. The first time I was looking at it, it was like mid 70s, trailed up to 78, 79. Now it's at 83, which is what I expect to see. I still expect to see this six step expiration cycle volatility continue to expand because that's right now when earnings is. And I would expect to see the earnings cycle, not necessarily to be like massively volatile, but much more than the others. And then this also popped up on my radar as a pure anomaly. You can see vol in, what is this? The 27 SEP? Yeah. 27 SEP goes from 80.91% to 4 October, 41.8%. So cut in half. And then 18 oct back up to 88 and a half. So that's another mispricing. I think that um, I'm waiting to see if it's literally just a print error or something that's a little more persistent tomorrow that I can trade, but just another volatility anomaly. So in this case, you could tell a lot of what I'm doing is trading vol in the product. And it's just because the Delta meaning directional movement of it, it's, it's just not showing up in any significant force for the time being. So that's what I got for today. As always, anything you want me to take a look at, let me know. There was a couple um, people, couple things people emailed to me. So I'm going to try to hit those in the live session later today at 5 p.m. Pacific time. So come hang out then if you're so inclined to talk a little bit more about the market specifically. But in the meantime, be an outlier. I'll see you guys later.